Thank you for joining us. And this is an experiment. So whether or not it is successful will just depend on our interaction. As shared at the pre-concert talk, um, we're going to have a little press conference. If you have questions about anything that you just saw or the experience putting it together, we have these wonderful artists on stage who are just going to go down the row, introduce themselves, and then we have some microphones in the aisles, and we'll be able to hear your questions. And this will all happen with a little bit of commotion in back while we're setting up for the last three pieces. So. Hello, my name is Lily Edgar. I'm a Wisconsin native. Um, I've been a professional dancer for the past six years, but I've been doing ballet since I was four, so like my whole life, basically. Hi, I'm Victoria West, um, also a Wisconsin native, uh, originally from the Wausau area. Um, I don't know how long I've been professionally dancing. I didn't do the math, I'm sorry, but I've been dancing since I was six, um, and I tend to gravitate towards musical theater and contemporary. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby Stickles. Um, I am a professional dancer in concentrations of contemporary and modern. I was trained classically since the age of three, so I've been dancing in styles like ballet and modern for quite some time. Hi, my name is Caitlin Lambton. Um, I am from Vermont originally. i um, been in Wisconsin for about three years, and I have been dancing similarly maybe around the age of um, five or six with a couple years in between, um, primarily in modern, contemporary, but also jazz, lyrical. I like to do some heels every once in a while, some hip hop, some ballet, so I like to get it all in. Hi, my name is Abby Frank Taylor. Um, I grew up dancing here in Madison. I went away to Minneapolis for about 10 years um, and just moved back about two years ago. Um, I have been professionally dancing for about 10 years with mostly focus in uh, modern and contemporary dance. Hi, I'm Mie. I am originally from Japan, and I've been professionally dancing for the last 10 years, uh, mostly in modern ballet. Hi, I'm Allie Dodson. I play trombone. I'm in the second year of my master's program uh, in trombone performance. Also, I'm from Michigan. I forgot to say where I was from. Hi everyone, I'm Annabelle Mellis. I am from Virginia and I am a sophomore music ed major and I am part of the horn section of the wind ensemble here. Hello, my name is Amanda Gibbons. I'm originally from Oregon, but I'm excited to be continuing in my master's degree as a badger. Hello everyone, I'm Carolyn Miller. I'm a clarinetist here. Um, I'm from Michigan and on a side note, I was classically trained in ballet for a good chunk of my life, so. This is a cool, cool, cool collaboration. <laughs> for uh, Carolyn and Annabelle, for the first piece, did you also practice and prepare in pairs, like duets, or was this all rehearsals prepared individually? Um, so I guess I can answer that. So most of our rehearsals as a group were in a group, but I had worked with my um, partner that was also the second clarinetist on some sectional work um, to kind of put those together, so that was duo work. Um, it was interesting because we had kind of pairs of each instrument of the quintet, so um, working together not only as um, with four other group members of the quintet, but also kind of double of that was interesting too. So I guess it's more for the dancers, but um, what were the sort of like motions that you guys were sort of like doing? And I guess you could go in line and just explain like what you did and like why you did it. Um, there were quite a few gestures that we actually, Liz had us kind of create um, from like parental figures that were a big part of our lives growing up. Um, and so we each kind of had our own time in the studio to kind of figure out what story of our life we were gonna put into these gestures. Um, so one of mine was like looking, because my mom used to look through binoculars at the birds out the window. So I always remembered that. So I was thinking of my mom for that one. 
Um, there were also a lot of parts where we were like gazing, and I guess in those moments I felt more like wonder during those parts. Um, but with the whole healing thing, we also had moments where maybe we were a little bit more vulnerable. Um, going back to the gestures, one of mine, um, I was a very introspective kid, um, so my parents were constantly like dragging me around, telling me where to go, telling me where to look, um, so I included that in mine. I think for me, I didn't start to become emotional around the work until we approached um, rehearsals with the instrumentalists. Uh, it feels as if we're stepping into their home, right? We're not just rehearsing with them or performing with them, but there's some sort of um, feeling of home and comfort in the way they practice and perform. And now we get to share like our home and our comfort with them. And that's something we really lost over COVID, especially in the, the institution and the university. And so the, you almost like get choked up getting to physically just watch them do their craft and then have them you know, get to watch us do our craft too. It was very emotional in those moments. Um, part of what we spoke about with the piece was related to statues um, and how we see a lot of statues that are missing limbs um, and how sometimes those were lost over time due to environmental factors, but how often it was also sometimes a form of vandalism or a form of kind of political or um, cultural control. Um, and so um, when we did the casting of um, different body parts, I personally was inspired by my mother, who's a lung cancer survivor for over 10 years now, and she had a low back to me, and so I thought about this breastplate, um, and there were also gestures for me um, related to water skiing, because that was her biggest goal after losing part of her lungs was to be able to water ski. Um, so thinking about sometimes losing those parts of ourselves naturally and sometimes through some type of violence, but how it can also be healing is something that I thought a lot about um, in different parts of the piece. Yeah, I think the thing sort of joining all of these ideas too is just the thought of care. So we have gestures from our various caretakers in our lives. Um, one of my gestures is this, which when my grandma has the winning card for a game, she holds it up on her forehead. Uh, so that's where that one came from. Uh, but they're from different caretakers in our life. The gauze is from different uh, injuries we've each had or our family members have had. Um, and then we have interactions with each other where we're tending to those injuries that are hopefully now healed um, or healing. Uh, so there's just a lot of theme of care uh, through the piece. They took all of mine, so I will just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it connected a lot with like the care for each other, like in the piece. Um, just even even though it's not such a you know super emotive piece, but just like recognizing each other, touching each other, um, putting the cast on. Um, that was like a very like intimate and vulnerable and caring part that I really liked. The time signatures seemed to change a lot throughout. It was not exactly typical waltz or three-quarter time kind of stuff. And as a musician and somebody who's been described as um, rhythm challenged, um, what, what's going, um, it's directed mostly to the dancers. What's going through your head trying to keep up? Sometimes I have to turn that off when I'm, when I'm performing or else I will miss that next beat or I'll miss being present in the moment. So quite literally some days, nothing. And that's freeing <laughs> in the movement, right? But there's also the, sometimes these unspoken rules within our practice of dances. You defer to the person in front of you or who the person who everybody else can see within the space. Um, similar to how probably you follow your first chair in, in music. And so it's, it's tuning into each other. And even if we're seeing each other, feeling um, on the same breath, feeling in the same groundedness with our feet and um, digging into that and making sure we're, we're honoring that process, even when maybe that musicality is, is challenging. It, yeah. Yeah, I think the breath is a huge piece of it. A lot of times, uh, at least speaking for myself, I'm listening to the melodic flow that the musicians are um, providing and uh, tapping into the breath and our movement with their breath. Like, what a gift to uh, be dancing with musicians who that is 
that is how they do it. Um, so I think tapping into the breath we hear and feel from them and then the breath we feel with each other. I think that there's also a lot of like, for me anyway, I did a lot of homework for this piece. Um, in my ballet career, I was always a stickler for counts. So I was like, I need the counts, you know, to always be in my head. But with this, like they've said, there's a lot of, you know, with the breath and like watching the person out of your peripheral vision and being with the ensemble in the group, which was a challenge for me. Um, and so aside from learning that and trying to grow that in myself, I definitely also would listen to the music a lot and, and go over it and try to maybe for myself even just find counts where I could, where it made sense for me. I, um, I'm a friend of the choreographer on Facebook. I always assumed that, um, had you been injured and had a cast or something? That's what, oh, all right. So um, I assume that was, I, I read some of that, in, but I can also see the Greek sculpture and the um, Olympia look. But just wondering how that played into, um, how much that played into this piece, your injury. And yeah, um, my injury wasn't necessarily a casted one, but like a deeper kind of rip. Um, but yeah, I think like I just was really interested in the Olympics. I was interested in like healing. I mean, in this time where it's kind of like tragic, um, trying to find the care, maybe not the comedy. Um, and yeah, I think that was part of it. And also just bringing a whole bunch of dancers together from, I mean, they didn't all share, but they were from different companies. So this isn't my like company. I don't have a company I like to do pick up. Um, bringing people together is like part of my process. So I think yes, Yes, and um, to your question. <laughs> I wanted to ask the musicians, what was it like to, to do this collaboration? I think this is, um, well, I don't think we do this very often, if ever. So what was it like for you as musicians to work with the dancers in this way? I can talk a little bit of that. Um, so this is our really our second big collaboration we've done this year. Last semester we did it with some artists in the art department, and that was really cool to see a vis another visual art do a collaboration with music. And I think, especially with this one, this was very cool. It was very theatrical. And yesterday in our rehearsal with the dancers, we were asked to say something we thought was cool about the dance or just our own personal experience. And I talked about how when I was listening to the music, I saw certain things, like I thought the dancers were gonna be like doing this at this part, or like not doing the things I thought they were gonna be doing. The first time we saw them do the dance, I was shocked. I was so impressed with the work that everyone had put in to do something so cool, and something that I don't think has really been done in a music setting like this. I was kind of thinking of sort of like two things. I've had the opportunity to work with dancers before, but it was in like the pit, so like underneath the stage, and then there was the ballet up above. So I never actually got to see what it was the dancers were doing. I could just hear like footsteps on the stage. <laughs> um, so it was a way different experience to actually see the dancers like right in front of us, sometimes really close to us. Um, and I think it's really interesting. Sometimes musicians talk a lot about how some of what we do is like athleticism, like some of the way that we prepare is like related to being an athlete, just with like little tiny muscles instead of, you know, full body. But it was just really interesting to see like true athleticism, like whole body, um, and how like related that is to what we're doing. It's just cool to see it like right there in front of you. I was going to say part of it, I think that's fun to me is the balance of doing kind of what we normally do when we're playing and we're paying attention to the conductor and the other musicians, 
but also trying to enjoy watching what they're doing. There are lots of times when I caught myself trying not to be too distracted by watching their amazing performances as well, and I was like, oh, I'm still counting rests, and I have to come back in. And I was like, so I think it's funny because I realized in our rehearsals, I repeatedly saw specific sections of what they were doing because it was always when I would look up and watch while I was resting and there were certain parts of it that I always recognized in the choreography or throughout performing it and I'm really excited to watch the live stream back and see the parts that I didn't watch in our rehearsals because they were when I was playing and looking at my music and I get to see the whole thing because it's very interesting to see only parts of it and how it plays into what I'm performing actively in the moment. Okay, I think that's it for our Q&A panel. Thank you so much for all the questions you asked, and thank you for being here. We will move on to the next part of the class.